So Frankie Ford's here with my boy Clark Anderson. We are gonna talk about age-defying fitness. Clark is 52. Get ready to turn 52. Get ready to turn 52. I'm on the cusp of 46. We're not hiding from our age. A lot of people out there hide from their age. And so one of the reasons I have Clark here, Clark is a world-class uh, fitness trainer here in Las Vegas, and he knows a lot about MMA, the body, anatomy, movement. And, um, and I realize that I see so many people that as they get older, they just sort of they concede to father time prematurely. They think, oh, I'm too old for this. Oh, I'm getting too slow. Oh, I'm this. And then, of course, they just fall off the wagon. So today, Clark and I here are going to talk about um, some of the things that have helped us. I mean, I think you look really good for 52. I feel really strong for almost 46. So, Clark, some of the things, you know, you see a lot of, you work with thousands of clients over the years. What would be a couple of things you think that, that people can do to stay young? What are the things that have helped you stay young? Well, it starts out obviously with having good genes. I had some good genes, but I didn't take, take my genes for granted. So I had some good qualities to start with. Um, once we get past the fact that you have maybe some, you maybe you do or maybe you don't have good, some good genetic uh, potential to start with, we want to make sure that we're, we have a good mindset. I mean, I don't feel like, um, you know, I'm, I'm 50. I don't feel that. I've never had that mindset that I was 40 or 50. I just, I just feel young. I just really feel young. I mean, I I've, I've seen you. That. I've seen, I've seen you at the gym, and I mean, I've seen you do like the plyometric jumps that let, like maybe track and field people would do, and explosivity. It blow, blows my mind to see uh, how explosive he is, just moving across a room, jumping, leaping, um, very functional power too. And it's like, man, it's like that is to do that at, at 52. And I wouldn't have guessed 52 anyway. Um, but you know, again, psychologically, it's hard on a lot of people because we think we get older, we start thinking, well, my best years are behind me. And even on a professional level, not just an athletic level, not just on a health level, but on a professional level, we're thinking, man, well, if I was going to do that, I would have done it by now, right? That's the hard thing that I, that I see with a lot of people psychologically. They think, well, I thought by 40 or 45, I would have done X, Y, and Z. I would have been a millionaire. I would have did this and I didn't do it. And then it's really hard on people psychologically to think, man, is it is there still time on the clock to do that? I know you're looking at things, you're you're, you're expanding. Yes. You know, talk about that. That's the psychology of wrestling with with father time. And yeah. and, and did, did did the window pass me by? Yeah, it's just, yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a great that's a great uh, perspective. I think for most for me, uh, I didn't start going to for example, I didn't start my graduate degree is in exercise physiology, but I didn't start going to college until I was thirty five. I was already doing well with personal training uh, business in Chicago, but I was encouraged by my girlfriend at the time to go to school and my clients, and so I did. But I was 35 at the time, but I had a six-year plan to get my graduate degree, and I did. I started out at a community college, Harry S. Truman in Chicago, and I transferred to University of Illinois, Chicago, and got my bachelor's degree and then my graduate degree subsequently. But um, a lot of that is, I mean, I had people telling me, oh, you're too old. This is when I was just 35 years old. I'm too old this to go to college. In the pursuit of the college. Yeah, degree. See, you're too old. Why are you going back to college? You don't, why, are you going to, why are you going to college? Because I, I hadn't gone to college. Why are you going to college? You don't have to do that. Why are you going? I'm going for my own self-edification. And I think um, I wasn't, uh, I focused on me. My, my girlfriend at the time, and, and, and I focused on me doing what I wanted to do. And I had clients that, that were So it was in your heart, though, even though your girlfriend had mentioned Hey, you can. You should go back. Yeah, because I was procrastinating. I was procrastinating. But it was. But it was in your heart, though. It was in your heart. It was something I had been thinking about. But I had been procrastinating, like so many people do. Because one of the things I I noticed with when it comes when people talk about age defined, people oftentimes get back to what Frank said earlier. People start thinking my best years are behind me, and we don't know how many years are in, in in front of us. We only know how many years are in back of us. But we don't know whether our best years are in front or in back because we still have time as long as we're alive. So. What my uh, what happens is a lot of people they start making things harder. This is what I've learned over my thirty years of being uh, involved in fitness for myself and as a profession for over twenty five years is that people start making things and it's a microcosm society. We start making things harder in our head, and then when they're harder in our head, head then they're hard in reality. So, for example, you know when I was when I was thinking about college, I was I think I thought it's going to take me too long to. It's going to take me four years to work on my degree. It's going to take away from this. It's going to take away from that. Well, those four years were going to pass by one way or the other. And after four years of hearing me talk about it, that's when my girlfriend told me. She said, you know what? You could already have a degree by now. You've been talking about it for <laughs> the last you know, couple years. It hadn't been four years, but at least a couple years. And she said, you could already have something by now. 
and she was right. And it's because I was in my head, I was making it harder than what it had to be. And when we make things hard in our head, we make things hard in reality. And as a consequence of making it hard in reality, we're not likely to do that thing. Did you cry when you got the degree? No. You didn't cry? No, I didn't. Did your mom cry? Was your mom My mom, My mom's had been, had been dead for, my mom had been dead for years. But um, the, the main thing for, for me was that it was more, it was just satisfying that I had set out on a plan for six year plan to get my degree, my graduate degree, which I wasn't focused on my bachelor, my associate's degree or my bachelor's degree. My focus when I started going to school was to get my graduate degree in six years. I started out in August of 2001. I finished in August of 2007. So it was a mindset. And even at the uh, community college I started at, Harry S. Truman, there were people that when I was taking, like I took a theater class, there were people in there that were 60 years old. Mm -hmm. They were just taking classes for their own edification, again, for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was encouraging too, to see other people in there. You know, you, know, you know what is beautiful, and I have a couple of uh, thoughts on this, because you really sparked a lot of different thoughts. And I call him Clark the Spark, so he just sparked it. But, but what's interesting about that is when you waited until your 30s to go to college, it's clearly, it's not something that nobody's pushing you to do that at that point, right? At that point, it's all you. You're going against the grain. You, you know, you are, you are doing something that it doesn't, you know, it's like not that many people at 30 are going to get up and go and do that. So it's clearly something that was in your heart to do. It was clearly coming from you. It's not a parent nudging the, the kid or forcing the kid into that. But Clark... Uh, triggered a couple of things when I was at the University of Maryland number one um, So it was an accident that I even got into journalism. I was a journalist for years I worked in newspapers for 10 years. I worked for a TV station I worked of course for ultimate fighting championship and it was an accident that uh, that I wound up being in journalism a, a professor of mine came up one day her husband was a journalist for the Baltimore Sun She said you're a really good writer. You should write for the school paper. Well great idea first person ever really believed in me as a writer There was one problem I had always thought I was a good writer, but I didn't want to put it to the test. So I was hesitant, like I thought in my mind I'm a good writer, but I didn't want to go and apply for the school newspaper and then they reject me and then I think, man, I'm actually not. So, because I, I had in my imagination, like I think I'm good at that, I think I'd be good at that, but then we don't want to put it to a referendum. We don't want it tested. We don't want to put it in front of an expert thing and be like, they can crush our dreams and be like, you suck. So that was a mental leap for me. It was like, look, you think you're really good, Frank. This professor is encouraging you. She's saying you can do it. You should do it. Do you want to go and risk the rejection of these experts? And be like, nah, you're actually not that good. Go away. And then I'm like, man, I just... And so it, I, I could fantasize about it, but then actually put it to the test is another thing. A lot of times people don't want to be tested. They don't want to test it. They're a hero in their mind, but they don't want to test it in the real world. And the other thing was when I was at Maryland, I was a philosophy major, and I took a class called the philosophy of life. And, it, and there was a point where the professor... You know, asked everyone in the class that listen, how many people raise your hand if you would want the first one third of your life to be the best years of your life? The first one third of your life to be the best year of your life. So we looked around the class, and nobody in the class, like 30 people in the class, and nobody raises their hand. Okay, raise your hand if you want the second half of your life to be the best years of your life. And a couple of hands. Raise your hand if you want the last third of your life to be the best years of your life. And almost every hand, including my own, goes up then. And what does that tell you? It, it's, it's a paradox. It's a contradiction because on the one hand, we do have this thing as we get older. Like, man, the best years are passing by. I'm too old to X, Y, and Z. Too old to own a business. Too old to be a millionaire. Too old to be in the best shape of my life. We have that so home. we have that. But on the other hand... Most people, we are wired that all is well that ends well. We want a happy ending. Even if it's rough, a rough ride and a rocky ride, America is a how-you-finish society. It's how you finish, finishing strong, right? A happy ending, all is well that ends well. And that, that was, a, I bet you, I could go into any auditorium, any arena, any classroom, we could do the same thing. Maybe, and anybody who's college age or older, would, it would probably be the same thing even today. Yeah, who would want to know that the first third of their life is going to be the best and it's all down here? <laughs> it's all, yeah. Nobody wants It's like that. a Super Bowl. Dan Marino, right. Dan, Dan Marino gets to the Super Bowl year two. Right. They never get the poor guy, never gets back. That. No, so I agree with you. I think, so that's when, when people talk about age defined, I think it's a, it starts with, again, it starts with the mentality as it does with most things. It doesn't matter if we're talking about the fight game, it's starting your own business, being an entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. It starts with the mindset is always the number one thing. Then you have to have actionable thing. You have to be action act, act upon the things that you want to to accomplish. If you have a goal, having a goal is one thing. 
a goal is one is good, it's a direction, but then you have to have a plan because a goal